Good morning. Welcome as we gather to worship on the second Sunday of Easter. I think one of the most underappreciated features of the church calendar is that Easter isn't a day. It's a season. It's, a, it's seven full weeks in duration. And uh, that's actually rather important as we're going to talk more about today. Um, because while well, Easter Sunday is, is awesome, and I look forward to it every year, we had a great time together last week uh, of worship, and the music was beautiful, and the food and the fellowship, it was just all wonderful, just a, a wonderful celebration of the resurrection of our Lord. But the idea, as we started to talk about last week, is that um, you know the resurrection of Christ and the joy that we have and the hope that this brings, it isn't a one-day event. It's something that actually changes the trajectory of, of time. It changes the trajectory of our, our whole lives. And so it's, it's appropriate that we should celebrate it as a season, as a kind of living into the light of the empty tomb, so that whatever else is going on in our lives, and probably for everybody here, uh, there's a lot going on, right? Some good, some not as good, some, some great and easy and light and fun, and some dark and challenging. And uh, that's where the, 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 the light of Easter is, is sort of something that it continues on in our lives. Uh, no matter what else is happening, there's still, we still say yes, but there is this promise. Yet there is hope. And, and that's why, that's why we, uh, we celebrate Easter as a season, as a whole new time happening within all the rest of the, the stuff that's happening in this fallen time that we're all a part of. Anyway, so welcome as we gather on this second Sunday of Easter. We'll talk more about all that stuff as we get to our message later. Uh, welcome to everybody who's here and welcome to those who are joining us also at home uh, via our live stream. Your presence in this way enhances our Easter joy and we're glad that you can be a part of our time of worship with us and invite you if you can to, to post a word of welcome in the YouTube chat feature so we can greet you and um, worship with us, sing with us, pray with us and commune with us when we come to communion later in the service. If you've gone if you've experienced the gift of new life in Christ through baptism, then you're welcome to continue on with us in the nourishment we receive through the sacrament of Holy Communion. So now would be a great time to gather whatever bread and grape juice or wine that you'll use when we come to the sacrament. I wish us all then a blessed worship celebration on this second Sunday of Easter and invite us to prepare our hearts and minds to worship as we hear our prelude.
each of the seven Sundays of the season of Easter, we begin by giving thanks for the gift of new life that we receive in baptism. And that's actually why we light that candle during this, this season, this special season um, that represents that particular candle, light in the darkness of the tomb, light in the darkness of whatever else is shadowing our lives. So I invite you to stand as you're able and join me as we give thanks for the gift of grace we receive even before we know to ask for it in baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, supported, and made new. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism and the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sins and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. A gathering song is, I want to walk as a child of the light. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings, and I invite Richard to come forward for those. The first reading this morning is Acts 4, 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds that, were, that uh, was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet. It was divided to each as they had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is John, from 1 John 1, uh, 1 John 1, 1 to 2, 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it uh, and testimony testified to it, and declared to you the eternal life that was the Father and was, the, and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we talk, walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with our Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I can stand again as you're able for our gospel affirmation. <laughs> Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. I invite Rebecca and the children to come forward for brief message. put in a pot that looks like this. Yes. Very good. <laughs> that's, yes, that's right. What does a plant need to live and survive? What did you say? Water, sunshine, and soil. Well, soil too, yeah. <laughs> she said seaweed doesn't need soil. Let me rephrase my question. What does a flower need to survive? Water, sunlight, and soil. That's right. OK, so in this little pot right here, we have one of those ingredients, soil. right? And then I've got my little toothpick. I'll tell you about that in a minute. They are seeds, yes. So in our lives, we have different people who play different roles. Some people are planters, some people are gardeners, and in the church, it's the same way. For example, when we get baptized, the Holy Spirit plants seeds of faith in our hearts. And as time goes by, we've got all these people here in the church. We've also got our families, our parents. We've got our pastor as well. And these folks all serve as gardeners. What do gardeners do? They help you grow how? How about with just the plants? How does a gardener take care of plants? They water them. Yes, they provide water. And what else do they do? They make sure that you're in a good spot where there's some sunlight? Yeah. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to be a planter. And as the weeks go by, you're going to get your own kit so that you can also be a gardener. OK? All right. So it says in the instructions that the first thing you want to do is rough up the first inch of soil. So will you use this fork and just kind of like comb it a little bit? Very good. Yep, it's brand new. Soon it will be wet once it gets watered. Okay, you did a good job. That's enough. Yep. Sadie, will you help us out? Will you pour this bag of seeds onto the top of the planter? The whole thing just so we can make sure that we get lots of flowers. Thank you so much. Okay, and the next it says for the instructions to poke the white ones. Do you see the white ones? Those are some flower seeds. To poke them a quarter inch below the dirt. Good. Okay. 
I think that's, I think that's mostly it for that one. I made sure that there's more seeds in all of your packs, but this is what was left, so I have two. <laughs> so back to what I was saying. The different people in our lives and here at the church, they play different roles. For example, the Holy Spirit is the planter of the seeds of faith at baptism. And our family, our friends at church, our pastor, etc., they serve as um, gardeners for us. But more importantly, we have God. God is a master gardener, right? He knows all about what is needed for each individual plant. And I'm sure by now that you know I'm saying that the plants are us, right? So where do we get sun? Where do we get sunlight from God? Okay, you said our family and friends. And what do they provide for you that feels like sunlight? Kindness, very nice, very nice. Um, we might say that God shines light into our lives also when we get to hear or read the Bible because we get to see the light of truth. How about water? Does God provide us any water? Anything that's refreshing? Okay. <laughs> How about besides, besides the actual water? What did you say? Milk. Ooh, that's my favorite. <laughs> um, yes, so there are various things that are provided for us, what we need to be able to grow. We've got our sunlight, we've got our water, and then we've got our nutrients in our soil. So overall, when we have God as our master gardener, he's looking out for our needs, not only our physical needs like the plant in order to be able to, to grow and to thrive, but also our spiritual needs. We need to be able to hear the truth so our families bring us to church so we can hear what we need to know, right? And we need to have the love and the fellowship of other people. And we find that um, in our church community as well. And most importantly, we need salvation. So God the Son provides that for us and shines upon our lives, right? The next part of the instructions which you already did just instinctually was to tamp down the soil with the stuff that was sitting on top. And I saw you do that and you already knew how to be a gardener. And that was so good. Okay, then right now I'm leaving the plastic wrap under this because this is a pot that has holes and I don't want dirt to get on the floor. But when you're doing it in your kit at home, you'll use the plastic wrap just over the top and not the bottom. And what you'll do is you'll use that toothpick. What do you think that would be for? Um, that's a good guess. It's in order to make holes for air, right? Very good, very good. Thanks for sharing too. All right, very nice. And so what we'll end up doing um, in your kids at home is after you've done all the step steps that you did, you will um, get this all nice and wet and moist, right? And then you will um, put the plastic wrap just over the top like, like you just demonstrated and poke the holes. And then you'll keep this in a place that's um, indirect sunlight because these are particular plants that prefer shade. The, these flowers, these specific flowers prefer shade. Indirect. Indirect, sorry, that sounds like in direct sunlight. It's actually <laughs> indirect, <laughs> sorry about that. Not direct sunlight. It is one word, that's right. Yes, sometimes I don't think about those things. <laughs> yes, so it's a shade plant, but it still needs some sun to live and grow, okay? 
For 10 days, you'll keep the plastic on and you'll start to see the little seedlings come up. But at that point, you'll wanna take the plastic off so that it can continue growing past this little half inch that we've given it, right? And then um, keep, keep the uh, little pot moist every, every day until you're ready to plant it into a bigger pot or you wanna plant it in the ground, okay? All right? Uh, she asked what type of flower this is. These are called impatience. <laughs> impatience are beautiful little spring shade plants. They come in all kinds of colors, so we never know which colors we're gonna get until they pop out, so that'll be exciting, an exciting surprise. Do you ever feel impatient in your faith life? Yeah? Can you relate to that feeling a little bit? All right, so let's go ahead now and let's ask God, our master gardener, to give us impatience in our faith life. Heavenly Father, and Son Jesus, and Holy Spirit, thank you for planting the seeds of faith in our lives. Thank you for providing us with your word, which is our nutritious soil, and for watering us with your grace every day. Thank you for the love of all of these uh, folks here at church who come alongside us with fellowship and that we get to be friends with which is also a form of nutrition for us. Thank you, Lord, for the sun, for Jesus, for the way that you shine upon us. And please help us to be patient as we find ourselves growing and learning and overcoming challenges that come up in our lives. And Lord, please help these children to continue to grow and blossom and thrive. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here's a kit, and here's a little rake. And here's a kit, and a little rake. This right here, this is hand wipes in case we got dirt on us, but we didn't. Thank you very much, both of you, for your participation. I'll see you in Sunday school. Very appropriate exercise for today and for this season. All right, let's do some gardening. <laughs> All right. uh, this, this first bit isn't in the manuscript if you're looking at it. I just, I've gone back and forth whether I was going to share it or not, and I figured, oh, well, I'll just share it quickly. Um, I read an article this week, uh, it was in the Wall Street Journal, this one, and um, it was an op ed piece that was almost comical. It was so cynical. <laughs> it was about. Uh, I don't know if you, you saw that, you know, for a while there's been this new no, no labels movement. I don't know if you registered that in the media, media uh, trying to see if maybe there could be a third party presidential candidate this year. And then just this last week they announced that they, they couldn't field a candidate. And so this article was basically about how nobody wants either of these two grumpy old men <laughs> to be elected president. But we have no alternative because we're a two party system, so it'll never happen. So really the best we can hope for is that Either way, one of them is going to win, and they can only be president one more time, so we'll only have four years to endure it. <laughs> the end. <laughs> well, that was an uplifting read. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I took those last five minutes of my life to read that. Uh, that was uh, a little discouraging. But I share it partly because, um, as we'll talk more about today and in the coming weeks, uh, I, 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 I shared, I mentioned on Sunday last week that, that I feel very strongly that there's a really powerful need for, for the Easter, the Christian Easter witness now in our world. And I, I'm not just, I think, saying that as a pastor. I, I, this is a good illustration of it. There is a pervading sort of cynicism and a pervading sort of sense of, well, there are dark days coming. And, and, and the idea that, yes, that might well be true, but there is yet reason for hope. There is light even in the darkest of all possible places in the tomb. Um, who's going to share that if not the church? I think the church has a lot of expectations loaded on it that some are unfair and some are fair. Um, but I do think a lot of folks assume that the church will just sort of do what it always does. It'll seek political power from one side or the other. But wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be a very powerful witness for the church today in a, in a world where op-eds are getting published saying, oh gosh, this is a horrible thing we got coming for the next four years anyway, to say that no, there's still good reason to have hope in this world. Maybe, maybe who wins the election isn't the most significant thing, 
although we can certainly and do for good reasons back a particular candidate uh, but God can make good and light out of every situation what a witness that would be anyway keep all that in mind as we now we'll go through what you'll see in the manuscript if you, <laughs> if you have it but uh, I, this all is again background to something I mentioned last week which is that the the resurrection of Jesus uh, isn't just an event within history it is but but more than that it's an event that makes history the resurrection brings a new trajectory to earthling existence. Death no longer has the final say. It's no longer the last point on our horizon. A time beyond this fallen one shines in the light of the empty tomb. Beyond these days that are too short, too taxing, too full of wrongs that we've committed and wrongs that have been done to us. So rich with potential, yet so rife with suffering. Beyond all of these moments, shadowed by the grave, a new day of grace and peace dawned. That's how the gospel writers understood the resurrection. And because they understood it that way, they, all of them, all of them wrote about the resurrection with missionary intent. I shared that also last week. They shared the particulars of this event, not in a detached way, as if they were simply passing along data. They show that the resurrection restructures reality. They're that there is more to earthling life than birth, death, and whatever we manage to accomplish in between, or something like that. There's another power at work in this world, a very real power within our flesh, within our history, stronger than all the other forces around us, a determination not to just let us slip away into nothingness. A love is directed at us that won't let us go, ever. Resurrection faith is a, a transformation. To believe in the resurrection of Jesus is not merely to hold certain counterintuitive data points in our head. <laughs> it's also not to just become passive beneficiaries of immortality, waiting around for our chance at heaven. To have resurrection faith is to become animated, revived, to find those parts of our lives that have been desensitized and numbed by the wrongs that are all around us in this world, wrongs that we ourselves have done, by disappointments, by failures, by the steady drumbeat of bad news, to find our deadened pulses and our dampened outlooks to be excited and recharged with vision. The resurrection fills our earthling lives with pro promise, promise. So the tomb, as we all know, is thick with darkness, stench. It's not airy and full of light until this tomb is open. To find this tomb open and empty is to find that we're subject to an impossible grace. In Jesus of Nazareth, something that shouldn't be true of humankind has become true. Our lives have a farther end point to them than the grave. That's why Jesus' resurrection has to be told with missionary intent. To tell it otherwise, to tell it merely as another event that happened within history, would not do justice to its fuller consequence and its, its, its wider significance. The only way to appreciate the truth of the resurrection, the only way to really appreciate the empty tomb is to see ourselves in it, see ourselves in its light, to, to, to share that light then of a new beginning, a new day that is dawning with, the, with other people, to announce that God has accomplished a salvation within us Kind of like setting a spring of everlasting life within us. As we heard in our reading, first, how has this worked out? Well, in practical ways, we heard in our reading from 1 John, God has called us off the road of sin and death, off of the sort of default behaviors that, that we do when our final end point on the horizon is death. Oh, well, whatever. Now we're called off of that, that road. It's not that we attain perfection, certainly as we all know in this life, but we receive forgiveness so that each and every day we may struggle against sin. We don't just give in to it, but we repent and actively reside in a peace that exists now between heaven and earth. John's gospel, especially of all four gospels, I think, John's especially describes the resurrection as a transformative event that sort of reverberates across time and includes all of us today. 
The empty tomb generates a faith that takes the form of daily witness to new life, turning, our turning from sin and living in promise and heavenly peace. In the verses just prior, some, some who were at our um, uh, sunrise service last week heard the verses just prior to the ones that I read, because at that particular service, uh, that was the passage that, that uh, I read and preached on. Uh, in those verses, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb first, and she progressively comes to a vision of the living Jesus. She shows up very clearly, the text says, when it was still dark. It's so early in the morning, it's dark. And she finds the tomb to be empty. But in her darkness, the darkness of the environment, and in her fear, the text describes her as being very fearful, that's all she sees, just kind of emptiness. And she's sort of not sure what to make of it. But as the morning goes on, the sun rises, light comes on the scene, if you will, her eyes see more. She looks into the tomb a second time, which is a really interesting detail, right? It's, it's something that commentators from the very beginning of the church have written about. <laughs> Why does she go back and look in again? But she does, and now she sees more stuff. Now she goes back and looks, and she sees two angels sitting in there. And as time goes on, she comes over to the angels. She has a very brief interlude with them, turns around, and then she sees Jesus. But she's despairing. She's weeping. She thinks Jesus is the gardener, right? And then eventually, Jesus addresses her by name, reestablishes the relation between them, restores her as God's beloved, and her eyes are fully open, right? So there's sort of the, there's a preview of, of how the Easter life takes hold just in this one person in her account. But, but then, of course, John's not done. Our passage that we read this morning begins on the evening of that same day as it turns dark again. Even though one among these disciples had been there that morning, the beloved disciple, John, and based on the empty tomb, of course, John, as it is said, came to faith, came to believe. Even though John is there in this room, apparently, their minds, too, are darkened, and they're afraid. They've locked themselves up in fear of what's out there, right? Jesus mysteriously stands among them, but it's only as he greets them with a word of peace, only as he shows them his wounds, only as he makes it known that it's him, that their relationship continues. Now the disciples see him as Lord, right? Immediately as they see, he gives them breath, God's spirit. Same word again in the Greek, breath, spirit. And calls them into mission, sends them, gives them an assignment of consequence and value, meaning. Now they have the power to go and forgive sins or not, in other words, to share the saving grace of God in the world and to share God's judgment against sin and death, to say that God is putting an end to this. Now that is their mission, to bring this light. So the resurrected one comes to Mary and lifts her up. He comes to the disciples in their darkness and raises them up, gives them calling and promise. Right? Then we have Thomas, good old Thomas. Now Thomas is very clearly meant to represent us, us, we who are not at the tomb, we who are not in the room with those disciples, we who live in our own darkness and fear at a later time. Our translation says that Jesus appeared to Thomas a week later. Now that's not, that's fine, it's basically right, but it, it actually says it, on the eighth, the eighth day, the eighth day. And that's, the only reason I'm highlighting that is that it, there, there, what's, there's a time element to all of this telling that I kind of want to try to lift up for us. So remember, of course, we have to remember that the counting of days was done differently in this context. It started the night before, right? So sundown to sundown, that was the day in the Jewish calendar. Why? Because darkness precedes the light of the sunrise in the Genesis account. So sundown Saturday to sundown Sunday is day one. That's the first day. So it's in the morning of Sunday, but the day started the night before. So that's day one to Sunday night. Sunday night to Monday night, day two, to Tuesday night, day three, to Wednesday night, day four, to Friday night, uh, it's Thursday night, day five, sorry, Friday night, day six, to Saturday night, day seven, right? Seventh day, Saturday night, so Friday night, Saturday night, 
So the eighth day is the next Saturday night and Sunday night. So it is a week later, but the point is, it's the next first day. They came on the first day, Mary to the term. So it's the first day of the week. This is the next first day. This is Thomas's day, right? This is all of our day, right? This is the day that we meet. We come together on the first day of the week to share in the life of the empty tomb, if you like. We can imagine. In other words, this is the perspective. Thomas's perspective is our perspective. The next first day in time, if you will. Our resurrection day. And like Thomas, we have our doubts. We have our skepticisms. The resurrection is not a rational possibility for us either. And we can imagine Jesus coming to us like he did to Thomas, coming to Jesus maybe like he looks in this picture up here, this painting from the 1600s. Here's what you asked for. If you feel that you also have to be at the tomb, or you have to be with the others in the room, then here you are. Here's my side. Here are my hands. See them and touch them. But in doing this, you will not really know the truth of the resurrection. It's telling that Thomas never actually is said to have touched Jesus' side and hands. You can go back and read it again if you like, but the text never actually says he does. Now, this is, a, this is implied, certainly, that maybe he did. And if you look at many paintings of the event over the years, most, maybe half anyway, they do have Thomas touching <coughs> Jesus. One of my favorite by Caravaggio has Jesus like grabbing Thomas' hand and sticking it in his side. It's almost vulgar. He's like digging his hand in the wound. It's crazy. But, but I think it's kind of important, that, that at least maybe important, that, that uh, Thomas never actually is said to have touched Jesus. It proved enough for Jesus to have appeared to him in the context of his own day. Jesus just says, here you go, Thomas, and he says, my Lord and my God. Blessed, in other words, blessed are those who are able to see in this exchange that it's richer, richer to come to sight by faith than to come to faith by sight. It's okay to want to see and to touch Jesus. We're going to sing a, a song about that in just a, a couple of minutes here. But to want to see and touch Jesus in response to Jesus' love is a different thing than wanting to see and touch Jesus as a precondition of our loving Jesus, our devotion to Jesus. Those who wish to touch Jesus' wounds as a condition of devotion would make the resurrection an event in history and just leave it there one day long ago. Blessed are they who perceive that it's an event that makes history. Blessed are they who find themselves on this day within God's eternal love, according to the disciples' testimony of an empty tomb. The resurrection is purest miracle. And resurrection faith means being involved in the miracle, made alive through its retelling. I shared again last Sunday that Easter, the Easter message I think is as important today as it ever was. Our generation knows fear and fear mongering. Many people experienced a diminished sense of meaning and purpose. Division often prevails over consensus. Loves grow colder. Increasingly our society is ignorant of the resurrected Jesus and skeptical about what the story could mean. The call for Christ's followers to be missionaries of God's eternal love sounds as loudly for us as it did for Jesus' first disciples. We have a message to share that our contemporaries will otherwise not hear. There are a lot of other messages. There are not a lot of people maybe sharing this one, but it's, it's our call to share it. <coughs> and because I am of that conviction, I've decided to make the life of resurrection history what it means to live in the new day of the empty tomb. Be our focus throughout this season of Easter and even into the time after Pentecost as we come into the early summer. I really had hoped today to be able to announce these things, but well, I just couldn't quite get the dates sorted out. I spent some time making phone calls and sending emails last week, really trying to get all the dates and everything figured out, and I just 
the slides are being prepared, but they're not quite ready. So you'll have to, you'll have to check in next week. But I am going to announce some things next, some opportunities, some Bible studies. We're going to reconnect with someone who is, who's doing a special ministry in the area who was once a part of this church and, and invite her uh, into our, our uh, Easter season here a bit. Uh, we'll hear from some other people. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> We'll have, much, we'll have the opportunity to learn more about what it means to show the power of the resurrection in our lives through our faith and witness, or rather through a faith that just is witness. And on each of these Sundays during Easter, our gospel passages will highlight the ways that the resurrection of Jesus 2,000 years ago is an event that reverberates through time and creates new life for us yet today. Amen. That song of the day I mentioned is Open Our Eyes. I invite you to stand and we'll sing it through twice together. Recognizing that the resurrection of Christ is an event that reverberates across time, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, using the words of those ancient disciples. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wild flowers that the children will plant, all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and vineyard workers who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear those who cry out in suffering and in pain. 
those struggling with addictions, those who are lonely, looking for friends, those who are without food, basic necessities, those who are in abusive or oppressive circumstances, all who long for the day of your justice and peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter Sunday worship. Help us at Hope Lutheran to respond faithfully to your grace and to grow in our new life together through faith formation opportunities over the coming weeks. Open our hearts to discern where you call each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment, please, to greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. And to those who are joining us at home, peace be with you. <laughs> All right, our service will continue as we receive the offering. Uh, there's, I, I, I see you back there, Pat. We'll, we'll get you up here.
you to stand again as you're able. And let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Holy, living, and loving God, we give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and as usual, I'll invite my worship, our worship team, just a, a couple this morning, to come forward, and uh, my communion assistant today, Matt, uh, to receive the elements first. And uh, thank you, Matt. I will keep, uh, before I forget, Pastor Ellen in our prayers. Pastor Ellen, you'll notice in the bulletin, was uh, signed up to... Uh, to uh, distribute uh, communion with me this morning, and uh, she she uh, got she she took ill uh, and is home recovering, uh, and uh, Matt graciously uh, offered to step in. So thank you, Matt, for doing that. For those who are at home, this is the body of Christ given for you. at home, the blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you. 
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. All right. Well, even though, like I said, I didn't quite get everything in the announcements today, I'd hope to, uh, we still have some to share. And so uh, we'll do that. And as usual, we'll just go through uh, the slides here, Holly. And if anyone at home is joining us and, and you see anything that uh, is, is uh, or you notice anything that um, is not here to share, and if you can po post that in YouTube, please do. So we'll get the, we can get the word out here to everybody. Otherwise, we'll just we'll, we'll go through it all here, Holly. And uh, thank you to everybody uh, who uh, was part of the service. Um, Lynn, if you're watching, thank you for the beautiful flowers in uh, memory of your mom. Uh, they, they're, we're just so thankful to have them. And uh, thanks again, Matt, for stepping in. Uh, happy birthday, Leo. I know you well might be watching. Um, I think, did we, did we miss anyone else's birthdays? Uh, I know we're still kind of working on those records, and there have been a couple lately that, that somehow I missed, but we missed getting in the slides, an anniversary here too. So we got to make sure your anniversary is in here, right? We didn't get that up, I think. John, we did. We did. Was it on the slide? No. Well, you mentioned it, yeah. Darlo yeah, Darlow Nelson. <laughs> For instance, so if, uh, if, there's, if there's any other announcements like that, don't, don't hesitate to let us know so we can update it. But anyway, Leo, happy birthday. Certainly, uh, it's a blessed day here uh, coming up this week. Okay, uh, work day coming up Saturday, right, Dick? Okay. It'll be a one, <laughs> you need some help. It'll be a beautiful day. Okay, yeah, trimming plants. Lots to do out there to be trimmed. Yeah, indeed. Okay, well, if you could come uh, and join, join those uh, folks, uh, that would be great. And we're starting at 9, right? Okay, terrific. Okay, uh, and uh, not this coming week, but the next week. It's, it's almost on us, the Women Widen and Word uh, book meeting. So there's the book. You still probably have enough time. If you haven't uh, gotten to it, you still could, but um, that's coming up here soon, too. All right. As I mentioned, next week we'll have some more announcements to share. So, so besides this calendar block off like the rest of April and May. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we will have some things in April, end of April, I hope, uh, early May too, and kind of trailing into June. We're going to, uh, at Pentecost, I'm hoping after Pentecost to uh, set the, the worship space up like we did last summer, where we'll be kind of worshiping the round. Yeah, we'll have, uh, so uh, we'll just, just stay tuned. Some exciting things are coming. Right, is there anything else though to share this morning for the, the good of the community? Yeah. I have one more thing myself to share. Um, we, last month we did um, cereal for, for, uh, the, for foods for less, <laughs> not foods for less. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the food pantry. The food pantry, a Tascadero food pantry. And we, Dick brought down 36 boxes of cereal. Yeah. And he, when he walked in, they said, how did you know we needed cereal? And they were in need of that. And of course, he told them then Chris Cross keeps us in tap. But if you get the Atascadero magazine, take a look at it. It has what they, how they, all of these little boxes are the, they give people a box of food for a week or two, not just a can of beans or whatever. So they make sure that they get enough food for a week and uh, instead of coming down every day. But, it's, 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 it's amazing how much food is there and how much food we, we need to give to the community. And I think what we'll be doing instead of every month, every other month we'll bring a food item. Keep and talking. I Sorry. will. I just, <laughs> keep talking. I'll explain in a moment. Just keep and, <laughs> and that way, because there's other things that we give to also. And so you're always very, very generous as to what, uh, what you give. And it was... Well, it's kind of a heavy, heavy thing to do is to get those cereals. And I think he's coming. <laughs> okay, he's coming. thank you. Yes? Thank you. Do you have an announcement too? Good. All right, All right good. You can help me stall another second here. All right, there he is. Oh, well, I had something to say, but since Pastor brought up the, uh, the angels sitting in the, uh, in the tomb, in the mid 70s i was graced by actually going to the tomb and those angels had to be really small 
I mean, there is literally no room. Getting on past that, I hope I made some people laugh. Uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but the 99 cent stores all over California are going out of business. And um, no, no, it's, it's, it's completely gone. I, Joyce and I went yesterday. Um, it's just starting, so you know, they're saying 30% off, um, but within the next couple of weeks, highly recommend that people, you know, some of you probably live paycheck to paycheck or are retired and don't have a lot of money, go. Um, it could help. Yeah. You know, it could help uh, in many, many ways. So, Thank anyways, you, you yeah. bet. Bye bye. That's great. Youth group has a schedule change this week. Wow, that's loud. Okay, that's good. Okay. The better to hear you. Um, instead of meeting on Wednesday, we're going to meet Tuesday here from seven to eight thirty. And as far as Sunday school, we do have both levels today in uh, the youth group lounge today. Christy will be teaching the journey, and I will be teaching um, Bible adventures in the hallway classroom. Excellent. Okay. Great, and we will have confirmation too. Full, full day of faith formation. Okay, sorry to run out on you there for a moment, um, but uh, I, I, like a good pastor, left my cell phone in the office today, and, uh, and I remembered that I had a, an email, very quick one, to read to you from uh, Emily Thompson. She's arrived, so I'm just going to read this to you. Uh, hello, Hope and Pastor. I just wanted to send an update email and say hello. It is currently Sunday, April 7th at 3.30 p.m. And today is the first day we are starting our discipleship training orientation. I arrived here in Perth on Friday morning and have been having so much fun with my small group. There are 10 of us in the school with one staff member and one leader helping us along the way. I don't know yet where we will go for our outreach, but when I find out, I'll let you know. Perth is a beautiful city. It reminds me of home, actually, very California. I'm very comfortable here, love the people I'm with, and I'm very excited to get started in learning the Word of God. If you have any questions, I would love to answer any, especially as I get started this week. Please let everyone know I love them, and God bless Emily. So thank you to, uh, thank you, Emily, if you happen to watch, uh, for sending that update, and um, I know how much she appreciates the support she's gotten, so uh, I know some continue to, to support her financially, and as I mentioned, at least for the next couple of months, we'll continue to receive donations on her behalf and send them along to her. After that, when she does finish her training and transitions to that outreach portion, she'll come under the formal care of, of um, YWAM, and at that point, we'll give new directions about how to support if you wish to do that. Are there any other announcements to share with the good of the community? For the good of the community. All right, seeing, seeing none, I invite you to stand and receive the blessing. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Our sending song is Thine is the Glory.
Alleluia, go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.